Uh, all right, Craig, the Obamacare lawyer, joins us. Hey, Craig, how are you? Good morning, folks. Craig Gott- Gottwalz, uh, of course, our, our longtime authority, many, many months ahead of the mainstream media on this little show, uh, thanks in, in large measure to Craig. Uh, so, Craig, let's talk about the latest on the Obamacare uh, story. I almost used a prejudicial term there, but I'm so fair, so fair, fair-minded. Uh, point number one, please. You, you know, point number one, before I even get there, i got to mention this because I just saw it over the weekend. Point 1A. I don't know, if, <laughs> I don't know if, you met, if you saw uh, Nancy Pelosi made a statement on Thursday about the VA scandal. Yes. And I found it astonishing, and nobody I saw picked up the nugget, that she – her first point in that in that argument she made was about the VA scandal was, well, you know what? Maybe we should stop and think before we go to wars and create all these veterans. Yeah. I.e., she said, of course government can't care for people. The VA only works when we don't have any veterans. That's a good point. It was really astonishing. And I thought, well, there you go. There's your Obamacare preview. Yep. Hey, and you know, without using up all your time on asides before we get to your points, how good a, an example do you think this whole VA uh, scandal is of what government health care could look like? Yeah, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a very good example, not in the, the next two to four years, but I think as we get down the road of what the ultimate, the, uh, where this is going to go when, when you start seeing providers bow out and when you start seeing the government say, look, we got to go to single payer, we got nothing left, you're there. You know, I, whether it's five years, six years, seven years, I don't know exactly, but... I think it's a very good indicator of what happens when you introduce big government and bureaucracy into something that should be a private exchange. What, what, Vincent? Can I defend the Nancy Pelosi statement for one second? I think she was making the point that if you have a system and then you, couldn't, then you proceed to overwhelm the system and it can't handle the amount of people that it, it was originally targeted to treat, then there, you're going to have problems. And I think she was making the point that maybe we shouldn't be getting into all these wars. It's true. Vince, it's, well, it's a valid well, point. All right. We're, 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 we're going to spend all our time I, I on this. I thought about that, Vince, but she's had well, And there's a perfectly years, reasonable answer to that. these wars. I mean, you know, yeah. how long and do you need? There was a huge increase in funding, and it did no good because it's utterly corrupt. Five years ago. Five years ago, they were given a warning. It doesn't work. And I'm, they still can't respond. My short answer to you, Vince, would be since the organization is corrupt top to bottom, I mean, that's that's there's truth to that, but that's not the problem. Anyway, yeah. talk about what large employers are likely to do in the next several years, Craig. Well, the most astonishing report I've seen predicting the future on, on that is um, it was actually put out by a very reputable financial institution, is the S&P Capital Division, um, uh, McGraw-Hill Financial. And uh, their projection is that 90 percent of, of S&P 500 companies could shift their workforce into the exchanges by 2020. 90 percent, which I think is really aggressive. I, I would, you know, even if we saw 30 percent go, I think that's a huge story. But I mean, it's out there and it's a it's a reputable source. And they're saying they're saying, you know, basically we're moving towards single payer at, at light speed. All the big companies are going to dump all the workers onto the marketplace. Well, if, if their prediction is right, then how fast would we get to, uh, you know, the well, we got to go single payer? I mean, that'd be a lot faster than you were predicting, right? Yeah, no, that would be. I, and I, that is the most aggressive projection I've seen. And nothing I've seen is quite that aggressive. And I, it, but it, it's it's out there, and I think it deserves note. <laughs> what are employers going to do with the sickest workers? Well, we talked about it before, and I actually uh, found a 2011 law review paper um, predicting it. And it's it, here's the quote from two law professors at the University of Michigan, it, in, what, three years ago? An employer dumping strategy can promote the interests of both employers and employees by shifting health care expenses to the public at large. I've seen it personally in a few cases now. You're going to see this, and it's, it's already happening, where the, the large self-funded employers are moving those really sick people that have million-dollar-a-year types of claims into the public exchanges, which very quickly – bankrupts or causes the death spiral, if you want to call it that, in the public exchanges, which is another thing, Jack, leading us right into, boy, we better go single payer because at least, you know, VA lines are better than, you know, insurance collapse. Speaking of which, uh, death spirals, etc., it was agreed on the right and the left, no matter who you ask, 
that the only way the math works on Obamacare is that if everybody buys in, that's why there's an individual mandate and an employer mandate. Speak to that, sir. Yeah, I love that because we first talked about that on your show in July of 2013, guys. I I told you, look, not only is the individual mandate neutered now, but the employer mandate will be dead. They've already delayed it twice. And now, which I think was groundbreaking, the Urban Institute of all of all institutions, which is by no means a right leaning organization, came out and said the same thing that a lot of people on the right have been saying, and that's that we just don't need this thing. Let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of the employer mandate. And if you say, well, gosh, why would we do that? Isn't that going to lead to a faster death spiral? Well. The problem with the employer mandate is, according to a Gallup poll, 41% of employers have held off hiring new employees, 19% have fired people, and 18% have reduced hours below 30 hours a week just so they can navigate this employer mandate, which has already been delayed twice. Wow. So So when it actually is impending, when it actually happens, the numbers not hiring, firing people, or reducing hours could be enormous. And it's devastating to any politician who supports it, and that's why whatever election will be coming up when they do try and put this thing in, it'll, it'll supersede logic, and they will get rid of the employer mandate. So according to Gallup, folks, if you are unemployed, somebody you love is unemployed, there is a significant chance Obamacare is responsible for that and will continue to be for years. Now, we're, we're low on time, so let's move swiftly. Another thing we were months and months ahead on was reporting that the reason insurance companies are keeping their mouths shut and going along with Obamacare and not squealing is that they, it's written into the law they will be bailed out. Look, if things don't go well, the taxpayers will pay your profits. It'll be cool. How important are those bailouts? Well, in a, in a financial report, uh, Humana, large giant insurance company Humana, actually stated that they're expecting to get anywhere from 575 to 750 million dollars from the 3 Rs program which is what we call the bailouts and that actually equates to one half of the entire profit they made last year so you're looking at half of one giant insurer's profit coming from the federal bailouts coming from the taxpayers yep very good. Yes. And, and the final note... The final uh, note I want to give you is the deductibles. Okay, go ahead. I mean, I, I see here that uh, the plans are so inadequate on pharmacies, on uh, prescriptions, that there's going to be an uptick yeah. in people just not taking their medicine. A couple, couple facts for you on pharmacy. The average people pay right now on, on the, for their drugs is 22% of the cost of the prescription. In the Obamacare, the, most, the two most common Obamacare plans, that more than doubles, so you're paying more than 44% for the cost of your prescription. The average deductible that you have to pay as an individual is somewhere between $3,600 and $4,100. And, oh, if you're a family, your deductible goes up to $7,800. That's just an average, guys. That's, That's, it's the Affordable Care Act. So, yeah, you're talking about doubling what we have right now in the workplaces for high deductible plans. So, uh, you know, a shorter version of this answer is, even possible if it's possible at all what percentage of people out there are going to have a better deal in the near future who are going to say wait a second this is awesome uh do you have any idea the the, the best studies i've seen on that say those people that are two and a half and lower times so two and a half times the federal poverty level or lower so you're talking about individuals making you know less than 27 28,000 a year and families making less than forty, fifty thousand a year. The the people that were just a little bit too much money to get onto Medicaid, but that are that are at such low levels of income that they're going to get really large Obamacare. Do you, have, do you have any idea how many million people that is that are actually going to things are going to be better for them? Because for everybody else, it's going to be worse. That's right. That's right. And, and as a, I don't know the number of millions, but I, I would just knowing the, the percentages of the population on these various plans, I think you're looking at at roughly uh, 15 to 25 percent of the population. OK, they'll get the best deal. All right. 30 seconds on the deductibles. Well, that was it. The deductible, the deductibles are doubling. I mean, oh, okay. we've got, we've right. got, you know, I, they, those the five and six kind of tie together. Sorry about that, but no, uh, right. yeah, the deductibles are doubling. The, the last thing, since we do have some time, was that it was also reported recently that one in eight of the people that did get Obamacare subsidies this last year, those subsidies are wrong, which is over a million Americans that have the incorrect subsidy and say, well, what does that mean? It means that half of those million are going to owe money back to the government that they're probably not going to have. Craig, the Obamacare lawyer, Craig Gottwalls, is an expert in uh, benefits for companies, etc. So he makes his living studying this stuff and trying to figure out the reality of it for his clients. Uh, Craig, very, very good. Thank you. Well done. 
Thanks, guys. All right, we'll talk soon. Well, it's going to be interesting politically, and that's why I was asking about how many people are going to actually have a better deal. But politically, it's going to be interesting to see as a case study in this slow motion rollout of something that is, you know, most people are going to hate. Yeah. How well that works. If you can hide it enough or delay it enough. Well, the idea is, and this is straight out of uh, Rules for Radicals, by the way, phase it in slowly enough that it becomes entrenched and gets its roots into the system so that ending it will be incredibly disruptive. So then, no matter how horrible it's perceived to be, correctly, it'll be too late to end it. 